Hello everybody, uh, in today's video I'm going to cover Ccache, which is a compiler cache. That is, it is a package within Gentoo that is useful for speeding the process of repeated compilation. If you're going to compile something more than one time, like maybe you're messing with use flags or something, Ccache can significantly increase the rate at which a package will compile under those circumstances. Now in this video I'm going to cover uh, installing Ccache and then configuring it in its files as well as configuring the portage features variable which I covered in a previous video to use Ccache and then I will show an example of how it speeds up the compilation process for repeated compilation. So let's get to it. Now as I said Ccache is a compiler cache. Here in the AMD64 handbook on the Gentoo wiki you can get a good description of what Ccache actually is. It says here that whenever an application is compiled, Ccache will cache intermediate results so that whenever the same program is recompiled, the compilation time is greatly reduced. Um, what that means is that every time a compilation happens, uh, there are intermediate objects that are being created and removed the, as part of the compilation process. And Ccache will actually store these so that they can be used again and don't have to actually be created as part of the compilation process. This can significantly increase the rate at which you can compile certain programs, especially big programs, and it's really most useful when you're compiling the same version of a program over and over again. The classic use case for Gento, where that really comes in handy, is when you have a package and you're messing with its use flags, and you decide that you want to turn on and off certain use flags and then recompile the package to see how it works with and without those use flags, Ccache can greatly increase the speed at which that can be done, especially for extremely large programs like Firefox, which, as any Gentoo user knows, takes forever to compile. Now one thing I will note that is said here in this description is, the first time Ccache is run, it will be much slower than a normal compilation. Subsequent recompiles, however, should be faster. This is because Ccache places an additional burden on top of the compilation process in terms of computing resources. And so it slows the first um, compilation, but speeds, as it says here, subsequent ones. I mentioned earlier that I'm going to show an example of how this can speed up compilation process, and so I'm going to take this into account. The fact that Ccache will slow down compilation the first time, but will speed up subsequent compilations. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually install the Ccache package itself. So we're going to emerge dev util, Ccache. Then hit enter. And yes, I would like to emerge these packages. It'll take a moment for that to compile. Okay, and Ccache has now been installed. There's a few more things that we want to do to set up the environment. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to run the mkdir command dash p to create parents var cache Ccache. And that will go ahead and create the directory that Ccache will actually use to store these compilation objects that it uses to speed compile times. Now we actually want to chone that same directory to root colon portage to go ahead and make it exactly like it is expected to be. Okay, and the last thing that we want to do is we want to run chmod to change the permissions. 2775 on that same directory, var cache ccache. Okay, now that that's done, we actually want to create ccache's initial configuration file. So I'm going to do that with vim, and it's going to need to be located in the var cache ccache directory, and it's going to be called ccache.conf, C-O-N-F. Enter that. Okay, I've gone ahead and put some information here. This is a initial configuration for Ccache based on information on the Gentoo wiki. Um, it will give you a good uh, idea of how to set the ccache.com file and how to change its options. All these options can be found in the man page um, of Ccache, um, but I'll go ahead and go over them right quick, right here. The first option here is max size equals 100 gigabytes. That's pretty self-explanatory. That's the maximum cache size that we're going to allow. The next option down here is umask equals 002. That is going to mask the permissions to allow other users to run ebuild and share this same Ccache cache. Um, this option right here is actually, as I understand it, mostly a way of dealing with certain older versions of GCC. It's best to keep it in this file because GCC can cause some issues with 
Ccash, uh, especially older versions. The next option down here is going to set the Ccash deer levels. Um, the default is 2, but this number has to be somewhere between 1 and 8, and the Gentoo Wiki recommends 3. And then the last two options down here are compression equals true and compression level equals 6. What that is going to do is actually allow Ccash to compress these compiler objects that it uses and thus reduce their size on disk. And then the compression level, self-explanatory, it just describes the level at which this compression is going to occur. This will help control the size of the cache, and so I recommend enabling compression for Ccache. All right, now that we're done with that, we're going to write and quit. And the last thing that we're going to want to do is edit Etsy Portage make dot conf and change our features variable to include the Ccache setting. So we're going to put here features equals, and then in quotation marks, ccache. And then below that, we're going to need to define the ccache directory. And we do that with ccache deer equals, and then the directory that we created before, bar cache ccache. And then close the quote. And we're done with changing make.conf. And now we have successfully set up Ccache and we can actually start using it. Now, normally the way that you're going to use Ccache is you're just going to keep emerging like you always have and Ccache will run in the background and do its magic for you without you having to do anything else since you set that feature in make.conf. But if you want to, you can actually run the Ccache command. And as you can see, there are a few options that you can run for it. Uh, one of them that it might be useful to you is the dash s option which shows a summary of configuration and statistics counters in human readable format about Ccache. So we can actually go ahead and run that, Ccache-S, and this will give you some information about Ccache. But if you'll notice, there are some things about this information that it gives us that aren't quite right. For instance, it says that our cache directory is in my user home uh, in a dot cache directory and it says that the max cache size is 5 gigabytes and we said 100 gigabytes in our configuration file that's because what ccache is showing you right here is it's showing you the settings for ccache as run by you the user these are not the same settings and not the same statistics as ccache as being run by portage for a portage command if you want to see information like that the correct way to do that is to run ccache-s with ccache underscore deer variable set to your ccache.conf files directory. So in this case, var cache ccache. And then we'll run ccache-s. And as you can see, that changed everything here, and we get the statistics that we expected. So if you want to see what Portage sees when it uses Ccache and the stats about Ccache as used by Portage, you'll want to run this command here, prepending the Ccache-s command with this Ccache deer variable to get it to spit out what you actually want to see. Okay, so I've done a lot of talking about Ccache, and we've went over setting it up, so now let's actually go through the process of running an emerge command with it and seeing what happens. Well, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to run sudo emerge dwm. Now, the reason I'm doing this is dwm is pretty fast already to compile. It's, it's really small and compact, and it doesn't take but about 10 or so seconds for me to compile it normally. So I'm going to go ahead and run it here and see how long it takes with Ccache enabled. Now remember, according to the wiki, the first time we run it, we can expect it to be much slower than normal. But the second time we run it, it should be vastly, vastly faster. So let's go ahead and let this run and see how it goes. Okay, it's finished running. And now I'm going to try to emerge it again, and we'll see how fast that goes. Now we're just eyeballing it here, but I am going to show you here at the end of the video um, a little bit more concrete data, not not anything like a real genuine benchmarking test, but something with some numbers in it anyway. So let's go ahead and run this and see how fast it goes. Well, I didn't notice too much of a difference there, but we'll see according to the numbers that I'm going to gather how much different the compile times really were. All right, everybody, I'm back with uh, some basic numbers uh, regarding running Ccache. As you can see here, I've created this very, very simple graph um, to indicate the compile times for 
two different programs that I compiled with and without Ccash. First being DWM and the second being VLC. Now I compiled these each time in uh, basically the same conditions. That time that I recorded DWM on video, uh, those are not the numbers that I'm using. I went ahead and canceled the video and cleared the cache and compiled DWM again uh, and VLC as well um, to give you a more fair example of how Ccache affects compile times. Now first here I have the first time running Ccache and then the second time running Ccache and up here I have a control which is without Ccache and these are numbers that I got before I even started recording videos today. Now for DWM which as I said before is a very small program as you can see there's not too much of a difference. The control took about 11 seconds and then the first time I ran uh, Ccache, as is to be expected, it took a little bit longer at 15 seconds. And the second time it was back down to about 11 seconds. So really not much of a difference at all that Ccache makes with DWM. Now VLC is a lot more of an interesting case. VLC is a much bigger program, takes much longer to compile. Without Ccache, it took 232 seconds to compile. And then the first run with Ccache took 257 seconds, a little bit longer as to be expected. But the second run dropped that by more than half. It got down to 125 seconds. That's a huge, huge jump from the control and from the first time run. As you can see, Ccache makes a big difference with repeated compilation of VLC. Now the way I got these numbers was I just catted out var log emerge.log and subtracted the numbers at the start of compilation from the numbers at the end of compilation to get an estimate of the amount of seconds that it takes for emerge to run. Like I said, this is by no means a strict scientific benchmark, but it's a good idea, a good example of what you, the regular user, will probably get out of Ccache. As you can see, it doesn't make much of a difference with those small programs like DWM, but the difference can be very, very significant with VLC. Taking off two minutes of compilation time can make a big difference with a program like VLC. Imagine how it would do with something like Firefox. All right, thank you everybody for watching. That'll about do it for the video today. Um, as you can see, I ran Ccache-S again to give an example of what Ccache looks like after running a few programs through it. Um, as you can see, there's 17.8 megs of data in the cache up to its maximum of 100 gigabytes. And it has some more information up here about it that can be useful for you to look over um, to figure out more about Ccache. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, hopefully this helped you to get your Ccache set up running and give you an idea of how this might be useful for you and for users in general. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.